All right, fam, it's your brother Asad. And I'm Adrian. And we are back again with another quick video. So make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that notifications bell so that you'll be notified when we drop new material on this channel. Secondly, in terms of housekeeping, I got to give a special and a significant and a particular and a peculiar shout out to my South African family for all the love you guys have shown this channel, my wife, my children, uh, myself. We greatly appreciate it. Third, in terms of housekeeping, bam, 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 just like that. I said bam, 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 just like that. I got to give a special and a significant and a particular and a peculiar shout out to the rest of the family. I'm not going to name no states today, just two. Texas, Louisiana, and New Orleans, because they're two separate things. We see y'all, we appreciate y'all, we love y'all, thank y'all for watching. Why they abbreviated? Number three. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why they abbreviated? <laughs> number three. Because I'm not feeling too well. Yeah. And I feel like trying to freestyle new uh, places and think of them. I'm, <laughs> we getting over a cold. All y'all. We didn't have a cold for about three days. Yeah. She had it first. She gave it to me. Hmm. Hmm. This is the things I get. Right. She gave it to me, and now I done been sick. But now I'm bouncing back. We gotta bounce back. I uh, bounce back. But anyway, <laughs> so now I'm feeling a little bit better, but I'm not a thousand percent. So if I'm low yeah. energy today, hmm, mm -hmm. if I'm low energy today, it's because, um, you know, I'm bouncing because back. Cold. Because of the cold. I'm bouncing back, though. You can't, you can't, I'm built you different. You can't hold me. Oh, give me right. hanging halfway out. Give me right. Oh, all right. All right. You know, like, yeah, then boom. I mess around and get in the screen. <laughs> me. Yeah, that part. That part. All right. So, oh, two years. This 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 video gonna be down and dirty, quick to the perk. 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 Point. And we gonna um we're gonna talk about our two years here. Two it's years. been two years. Mm -hmm. It just was like Over bam, bam, years, bam. Actually. Just like that. Yeah, it's been two years in a month or something like that. Mm -hmm. Bam, bam, bam. Just like that. Woke up one day, it was we went to bed one day, it was we was here for a year. Woke up the next day, we've been here for two years. <laughs> Just like that. Home. So what y'all don't know, let me let me fill y'all in in this first two minutes and 24 seconds. 26 seconds. I'm writing a book. It's a memoir. It's an auto, it's auto theory, right? Uh, uh, and it is a reflection on the changing conceptualization of home in my life from 2005 to 2000. And 24, almost 25, right? Mm. Right? The changing conceptualizations of home from um, my home prior to uh, uh, 2005, mm. what I understood to be home, what home, because home is not a place, people. Mm. Mm -mm. You got that wrong. Home is not a place. It's not. It's not. Home is a psycho emotional connection to a person, to a place, to a thing, to a city, to a nation, right? All the married people right now, if you marry and you've been married over 10 years, if your wife or your husband pack up and leave the house that you in right now and move to another place, when you come home later on, that's not going to feel like home. Mm. That's not what's going to be your house. But they're not gonna be home. Which is why divorce can be so traumatic. That's why, yeah. Even yeah. if they had a bad relationship, it's just you say a you, sense of loss and homelessness. You say you broke up my home. My yeah. home was broken up. Yeah. Right? Not my house. Your house still there. Right? So it's a a, 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 a reflective analysis of the changing conceptualization, uh, my changing conceptualization of home from 2005, uh, before Hurricane Katrina, when home meant one thing. And then the actual losing in 2005 of my home, right? Losing of my home, like when, when home is no longer a place. Think about that. When home, there was a period in my life for about a year mm. when home was no longer a place you could go to. It was no longer a place that really existed. It was technically inoperable. It took months for the water to, to drain the city. And then there, you know, it was mold. It was disease and all kind of just crazy. It was tanks rolling up and down the street. And mm. uh, then you had your cousins, you know, pooking and them with them AK-47s just shooting for no reason, right? <laughs> yeah, so home wasn't a place that, that, that it, was, it only existed in my memory for, for a while. Mm. And then 
a, a, a home in term the, the 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 reconceptualization or reinterpretation of home during COVID nineteen, right? When we were all forced in our home, when our home became uh, a place of isolation, mm. right? Prior to 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 that, your home was a place of solace. It was a place hopefully. Hopefully, hopefully. Some of y'all come from bad homes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm this, when, this when COVID came and they were stacking their mug. Oh. It was a lot of butt whipping going. It was a lot of Ike and Tina going I on. I remember yeah, they were worried yeah, about yeah. the kids. Yeah, they yeah. They were worried about the children staying home with you. Yeah, y yeah. With your own yeah, parents. The kids were like, man, these poor children got to stay at home with them. They're both dysfunctional. Now they got to be there for an extra eight hours with all this dysfunction. They just trying oh, to come up with uh, places and... <laughs> Refuge for the children to get away from this crazy. Let them go to the park. <laughs> let, them, let them play ball six feet apart. It's just, just they got to get away from the parents. Oh. So during COVID-19, home became, oh. uh, it, set, it became the, the actual physical structure that separated you from your loved one. Like, I couldn't see my mama and my daddy for like, what? Uh, at least six, seven months. Yeah, that's true. Because lockdown was, you Ooh, know. Yeah, yeah, because he ain't he ain't follow no COVID he ain't protocols. Care about that. Yeah, yeah, God got me. I don't. I, <laughs> I believe in God. Over. <laughs> it's gonna be over. I believe Next in God month. too. But that, that's how he got down. That's how he got down. I, mean, I believe in God. I don't. I, I ain't worried about no virus. I ain't worried because I know a doctor. <laughs> 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 so yeah, he ain't follow no COVID protocol. So uh, no distance, no distance or nothing, none of that. So, uh, but yeah, so then homes isolated me from seeing my mama, seeing my sister, being able to give them hugs and talk to them, hold their hands. How was your day? The type of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Home became that type of prison. Then, home became Johannesburg, South Africa. And what made jo Johannesburg actually feel like home? What is it about South Africa that black Americans keep saying makes them feel like home? Mm. Part of that, now I got several theories, because it's auto theory. Part of that is that in the experience of the black and colored South African, <laughs> black Americans can identify or, or see, uh, can, can see the reflection of our own experience. Mm. Right? So... When I talk to a black South African and I be like, man, these white folks doing this, they, it's not like they, listen, we got some of our African brothers and sisters, we love the whole continent. Y'all know I'm Pan-African. We love the whole continent. But if you grew up, say, in, give me something right in the middle of the continent. What's right in the middle? In the middle? I don't know. Congo. Congo. <laughs> bam. We, Congo. Bam, bam, bam. Just like that. All right. You grew up in Congo. And everybody in your town, your village, your area is black. You ain't never seen a white person in real life. You don't really feel that identity of blackness. Mm -hmm. Blackness is a creation of white supremacy. Follow what I'm saying. Blackness only exists as the antithesis of, whites, of whiteness. Right? So if there is no thesis... Right? Mm -hmm. No white people. Mm -hmm. Then you don't know what it feels like to be the antithesis. Mm. So there's a different conversation that, that we have to have. We can talk about like the impacts of uh, global, uh, uh, you know, how countries interact with each other. The kind of big brother approach the U.S. has to uh, African countries or whatever have you. That type of white supremacy. <laughs> but you don't have that everyday white supremacy. You know, you'll say that, that, that impact. But yeah. for black South yeah. Africans, they do. Mm -hmm. Black mm -hmm. South Africans, when I, when, in, in, in the book, I talk about my mom, um, mm, my lips dry again. Every time I come on, on here, time. my lips get dry. My mom, <laughs> let, me, let me get my LL. Why LL ain't never buy no lip balm? He stayed up <laughs> Hold up, you got like, the picture now. L-Y. LL ain't never buy no chapstick. No, uh, what's the no other chapstick. stuff? Carmex. Get your little Carmex. <laughs> and I need some too. Right. <laughs> well, you, well, you lecturing him, get your chapstick. But um, um, my mama talked about the indignity mm. of black men having to move off the side. Because my mama was born in 1939. This is this is really Jim Crow rural South having to, the indignity of having to move off the sidewalk to let white people pass. There's somebody in South Africa that know about that. 
Mm. There's somebody in Johannesburg, not, 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 I'm talking about somebody alive right now that's going to work every day still who know about that indignity mm -hmm. you know what i'm mm -hmm. saying so uh that's part of what the home feeling is it's here in south africa right. it's familiar that's mm -hmm. it it's familiar right okay. it's and that's like you know that's why the word family come from that's why familiar come from family mm -hmm. so we feel kinship towards right. south africans because yeah. of those experiences because of those experiences particularly with racism white supremacy jim crow and apartheid mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right so yeah but the other part of that familiarity mm -hmm. um it there's there's language that's familiar there's music that's familiar that there's infrastructure that's familiar there is um you know, like certain cultural familiarity. Mm -hmm. So it makes you comfortable. Well, here's what I would think. I would think, <clears throat> to take it a step further, the reason why we hear a lot of American music here, although uh, my piano has really supplanted, but when in our circles, like South Africans who are our age, mm -hmm. 45, mm -hmm. 46, mm -hmm. and all that type of stuff, they know all of the old soul music and yeah. all the stuff that we grew up on. Because I think even... A million miles away in South Africa, when they were watching those videos on TV, they they we reflected. They saw us. They saw themselves, themselves in us. Mm -hmm. You see mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So that's why there's this connection. There's, there's this familiar notion. And again, it's all based on racism and white supremacy. Watch this. It's another thing. This 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 the one right here. This the, when I came up with this. When I wrote this, mm -hmm. I was like, I was, yeah, I was in front of the computer jacked out. I was like, yeah, that boy a dog. <laughs> I was like, he a dog. Watch this. And as a New Orleanian and black Americans, because it's taking place all over the country, we understand colonization because gentrification is nothing but great value colonization. There you go dig it mm. the natives watch I, I i explicate this thoroughly and and y'all gotta get the book y'all gotta get the book when it come out y'all copy would you, you what would you say no i need i need you to take that a little okay because I, so, I don't follow yet mm -hmm. i'm thinking displacement mm -hmm. you may understand displace colonizers mm -hmm. particularly from the west the they use they use Land deeds, land transfers, <clears throat> market manipulation, all to claim land in someone else's area. The natives are then displaced or become subject to colonial rule or we be, or our neighborhoods become white. Mm -hmm. We have we go from having autonomy in black neighborhoods in New Orleans, Night Ward and the, the, the CTC cross the canal. And well, that's the night war. But um, in the seven, we have our communities, mm -hmm. and then they come in and they put in their bike lanes and they dog parks and they quaint coffee shops, and then the neighborhood, the land, the actual physical place that was the poster card for Black New Orleans life <laughs> is now white. It is now the the nat the power of the natives are usurped, right? That's why it's, it's colonization. They come in and they create a colony. The next thing you know, we follow in their rules. When we had the house on Dryads, on, on 2nd and D. You remember them people complaining about second lines coming through the neighborhood leaving trash? Yes. Why would you move in the neighborhood? That's, our na that's what they do. You, that's why you moved into the neighborhood was because... They had all this cultural activity taking place. But then when they leave trash on your lawn, now now we got, uh, what's her name? Stacey Head, when she was a council person, <laughs> talking about... You took all the way back to Yeah, Stacey. yeah, so I'm, I, I, I thought about all of this. When Stacey Head said, uh, we're going to have a, 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 a law Stacey against having cups. Yeah, she's not even from New Orleans. <laughs> go back where you came from. <laughs> That's, listen, that, go back where you came from. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> oh, Lord. Man, my lips dry, dry. But it's the <laughs> otherization. So I try not to otherize people and say, you know, they are outsiders. But the, the wave of colonization that came in New Orleans was the, the colonization of, uh, first, it was the help, the rescue help, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And people who can get their little resume off because they, they are, uh, uh, that's the next best thing to the Peace Corps. 
Then came the um, uh, Teach for America, who literally displaced 7,500 uh, Orleans Parish school teachers. They did. They displaced them, and people couldn't even return to their home. That was that's just that's colonization. Um, but you can thank your government for that, the Louisiana state government, for those types of moves. Oh yeah, 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 you know, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, they offered an opportunity for the little Teach for America kids, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, the culprit was your elected officials who had that plan in place. No, Made they off all those teachers. No, I think they all work together. Mm -hmm. I don't think you it's think like the Teach for America kids was in on the. No. When they when just saw political an opportunity to go and be Teach for America, they didn't say, you know what, I want to displace mm -mm. black teachers in mm -mm. New Orleans. That's not how it worked. When you come from, when you when you when when interests converge, there doesn't have to be a, 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 a overt conspiracy. Everybody just play their part. You see what I'm saying? I don't, they don't have to sit down and talk to each other and say, hey, this is your role. I'm going to do this as a state. You're going to do this. When their interests align, right? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like an insect to break up all of your thoughts. A little insect is but when their interests align, they don't have to uh, sit down and have a formal conversation about what they're going to do. They just do it. That, read the book. Col gentrification is, is colonization. I'm telling you. Interesting. I'm going to break it down. In the book, it broke down. I broke it down. It broke down. <laughs> <laughs> it broke it down. Lord, that so mercy. that... Oh, you're saying because we understand colonization that that is why we feel home or, or feel oh, all of this of all of this is familiarity and home yeah all of this is a lot of trauma bonding <laughs> that's sad, that's sad. <laughs> all of what we call the familiarity is a lot of trauma bonding <laughs> it's a lot of you've been through something similar i've been through something similar you know and but because of those the impact of those things are still felt presently because they have shaped culture, they have shaped society, they have shaped commerce. Mm -hmm. It's become almost um, it, it, it's, it's outside of just that one traumatic experience. It's a continuous continuous continuation of this tra traumatic experience uh -huh. that impacts everyday society, a racialized higher uh, a racialized society uh, with this hierarchy of those on top, those on bottom. So it's every day. So that, but it really starts with that 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 initial trauma mm. of colonization, the initial trauma of Jim Crow, the initial trauma of the slave trade, of apartheid, of, uh, and then for me in particular, we talk about the initial trauma of Katrina. Mm. And that's what, oh, I don't know why, I need some water. Yeah, you do. But Hold you on. <laughs> It's all this talking. I can't just keep talking and my mouth getting dry and dry. <laughs> <laughs> no, no that's, it's an interesting perspective mm -hmm. on home. You know, I used to describe how I felt about you as home. You know, it's like, I don't know. When we're together, it just feels like home. Because it was you. like. <laughs> Lucky you, girl. You found you a good nigga. <laughs> <laughs> but home in the sense of the comfort of home. Yeah. You know, when you're with your family and you grow up in your parents' house with you, when you're with your siblings, like we all know each other well. Mm -hmm. You know, we have hung out, we've fought, we've made up, we've gotten on each other's nerves on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Not a big deal, you know. Right, right. <laughs> and so that's when you know I was like, yeah, love, but it felt like home. It felt very comfortable. Mm -hmm. You're not gonna but, talk to you like we grew up together. Like we go. But that was back. from the very beginning, though. That when right. we used to, when we first met, we would walk around mm -hmm. and talk. It was like, and in my book, y'all go buy this book. I'm gonna talk about this book until it's done. Now it's gonna probably take me about a year and a half to finish writing it. But I got, I got it down. I got my chapters. I got my vision. You heard me. Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, but I talk about uh, um, our my my mom and your dad being very similar. Very. Both were mm -hmm. uh, what we call country. Mm -hmm. They were from the country, deep south. Deep country south. Black they were poor, rural, rural, mm -hmm. and they raised us 
with certain values that felt out of place in right. our society, you know, in our generation. Especially me in San Antonio. Yeah, 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 mm -hmm. yeah. They raised us with certain values. I thought I'm, 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 that chapter written, the gentrification chapter written. Look, I'm telling y'all, this is. But she'll tell you that's why I got sick. I was up to four, five o'clock in the morning. I was inspired. Right. But yeah, so that's mm -hmm. that's what. It, so it was so familiar. We it felt like home. Like so, when you and I would talk, um, like you would tell me a story, and I already knew. Like you tell me a story about something with your dad. I was like, I already know how you about to react. Yeah. I yeah. already know how this story ends. Cause that nigga yeah. was just like my mom. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I already know how this about to end. Well, that's how you know Stephanie and I used to crack jokes about that because her auntie mm -hmm. was similar to my daddy. The rants that they used to go on, it was just old black Southern country people rants. That right. You go on with your children. They don't clean right. Mm. They don't, you know. Wiping baseballs. <laughs> what white man made you black Negroes? Whoever he is, that's the worst one. Made Negroes wipe baseballs. Y'all know what a baseball is in South Africa? That's like where the wall and the floor meet. Where the wall and the floor meet, it'd be like this little strip that they put on that's decorative. Yeah. Now you gotta go around and wipe the baseball. What? What type of snake? Pull all the pull all the curtains down and wash them down. This is make you disinfect doorknobs for oh real. Oh my god. <laughs> go go on through my house. Disconnect all my you know. Make sure that all my, my uh, door knobs are disinfected. Mm, for real. Mm. What made you think of this, Dad? You just need something to do. Just something, something to do. Just something to do. Just something to do. Just let's let's see how we can work it to death. <laughs> and now our children don't do nothing. They don't know how to do nothing. nothing. Oh, that's why I say I'm. Uh, I have a lot of admiration for my parents and that generation. Because mm -hmm. even though they worked full time, like none of that household stuff fell to the side. Mm -hmm. They just figured like we got to do it all. I got to work. And I got to do all of this. And no, they put the children well. to the work. What you talking about? They put the children. We work. They managed it, though. Like, we only want to manage the kids to do it. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't even feel like getting up to show uh, you half the time and then monitor you and come behind you and make you do I it I don't over. feel like telling you to wash my car and come back and it's still dirty. Right. Uh, <laughs> now I gotta, you got to uh, do it again. No, nah, I got to go behind you. <laughs> and, and wash, I just do it myself. <laughs> See, that was my dad. Like, he will sit there and you will do it four and five times until it's right. Until it's right. You know? So Until it's right. Yeah. yeah, a lot that of was admiration real. for that little generation. That was real, and Ooh. that talk. And you know another thing. Let's just talk about it. These children not built the same. They no. softer. Oh, they falling I, apart. You, I mean, they could not survive. None of these children. I'm not just talking about mine. I'm talking about all these children. All these children. <laughs> they not built the same. If you get them out of poverty and the struggle, and you play, they not. Nah, nah. If, let me say this. Like, no, this is not the same. They just not. They're not, they not built the same. They they too in touch with their emotions. Some of them emotions you need. To... <laughs> <laughs> this is an emotional generation. You gotta let them emotions go, big dog. This generation stay looking for a safe space. Ain't no safe space. Ain't no safe space. This is real talk. <laughs> Listen, ain't no safe space. <laughs> space. Ain't no when safe you're space. dealing with people. <laughs> Bruh, I mean. And I, what I mean is like not that it's dangerous, but it. What I'm saying is like you can't expect any space you're in for people not to have a difference of opinion or to argue with you or to say something you don't agree with right and i feel like we're trying to create uh environments where we expect that i should say something and there should be no consequence no matter what right because that's a safe space that's not a safe space mm -mm. it's unrealistic it's just it's so you have to be able to engage with people and mm. have differences of opinion differences of opinion that's what makes you okay. intelligent but That's yeah. what makes you intelligent when you uh, when you're able to entertain someone mm -hmm. else's thought, even though you don't agree with it, and to be able to see it from their perspective, and then be able to argue against it from your perspective. That's what makes you an intelligent person. Yeah. But these people, they just they just soft, man. <laughs> they just soft. They they need the police to chase them a little bit. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> They, no, really, 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 really. They need the police to chase them a little bit, call them a few N words, and, and kind of break it. Kind of. I'm <laughs> call you a few. <laughs> and kind of make it, you know, <laughs> straighten up. Get a little stronger. This world is, is rough, man. My babies don't know how to wash no cars. I, I, so I told. Never mind. Never I mind. forgot because some of the people watch this, and I want I don't want yeah, my son to come away. Yeah, I'm not disparage these children at all, but they are different. They're it's different. It's a different generation. It's not the same. Yeah, they couldn't survive one hour. What?
as children. Because one of the things we did for us is like <clears throat> ribbon. Did y'all ain't rib much in San Antonio? No, you? no, I think that's more Girl, of a the, black culture. Yeah, that's a, that's a, yeah, yeah, yeah. No one else really play with each other like y'all. Yeah. Y'all just get disrespectful. Well, damn, y'all. We took my wife. You know I'm not like y'all. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what else I'm talking about? I'm colored, though. You just became colored. <laughs> I done found a new group. <laughs> Don't lump me with them. Oh my I'm god, joking. that's crazy. <laughs> but uh I mean we would talk about you are everything. Oh Lord. Half your face is hanging out the camera. Because you know what's happening? This is real conversation. This is a conversation we really don't put on a thing like that. Oh. Like this this see y'all see one like everything we do is real, right? But then this is the conversation we'd be having when the cam when the camera ain't on. And it happens to be on, I forgot it was on. Oh, you did? For a second, yeah. Oh, I didn't forget. Oh. But yeah. Well. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's been 25 yeah. minutes. I forgot what this, we this whole thing. We were talking about home, and then it, yeah, it went off from there. Mm, mm. But it's just home now, you yeah. know? And when I say, like, the honeymoon is ended, that's not in a negative way. Mm. It's just like in a marriage, the beginning is all lovey-dovey and... You know, you're just so excited about every little thing. And then after a while, you settle into a marriage, you know. And then it's, this is your mm. friend. I live with my friend. We live every day. It's mm. our routine, so forth and so on. I feel every like... Every day still feels like a honeymoon <laughs> with you to me. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let him lie to you. Don't believe that. Don't believe it. If I can show you the times when I'm trying to talk to you and you don't feel like talking... And you're looking at that phone. Mm -hmm. She'll come mm -hmm. while I'm while I'm in the middle of something. Like I watch documentaries and and stuff. She'll come while I'm in the middle. It's getting good. The man talking and telling me what I need to hear. And she'll come. So yeah, um, I talked to Stephanie today. Man, man look. <laughs> Stephanie ain't. And then got the nerve to be persistent. Don't stop it. Turn it off. <laughs> it's not going anywhere. You can. Press play later. Oh my God. <laughs> but then I'll do the same. Because she'll be watching something and I feel like being all lovey dovey. Oh. Mm -hmm. That's when I understand. Mm -hmm. Damn. What? <laughs> I'm never getting on this camera again without no water. <laughs> I'm over here suffering. <laughs> you know, your mouth feels clammy, clammy. Jesus Christ, what is going on? <laughs> I gotta go. Bye. We're home. <laughs>